uh, we defined epsilon core, remember? Epsilon core. So why? Well, well, the thing is, if epsilon is equal to zero, well, then epsilon core and core are actually identical things, right? If epsilon is equal to zero. But the problem is, in some problems, like this one, core is empty, so epsilon cannot be zero. So let's try to increase the epsilon then. Uh, can we find some epsilon where epsilon core is non-empty? Well, probably yes. Uh, but then how small can we make this epsilon? Well, the intuition behind this is that, so if epsilon is zero, that basically means, uh, you know, no coalition. And let's suppose some x vector, which is a, b, c, is in the core. Well, that means no coalition has incentive to deviate uh, from this payoff vector. So it can be one of the sort of solutions of this problem. Well, but the thing is, if epsilon is zero, has z uh, sort of empty core, well, that means there is no such payoff vector, meaning everybody will always have an incentive to deviate. So here, the epsilon kind of measures how much incentive do they have, all right? Uh, so because, uh, there you go. So the, if you remember the epsilon core definition, it is kind of exactly this, this thing minus epsilon here, right? Uh, so it means basically, if the core is empty, okay, I cannot find something which satisfies this, all right? So V of S is going to be greater than this summation for some coalition, all right? Whatever the xi vector you consider. But when I sort of reduce this, okay, I mean, yes, I know they have incentive to deviate, but then for some reason, think of this epsilon as like a punishment if they deviate. I don't know if it is a good uh, intuition. All right, so if you deviate, I'm gonna punish you. I mean, somebody's gonna punish them, all right? Maybe this is a moral, uh, I don't know, uh, punishment, whatever. Um, so it's like, yes, players have incentive to deviate, uh, but if epsilon is small, not zero, but if it is small, well, then at least we can say they don't have huge incentive to deviate, all right? And so we may actually work with epsilon core uh, payoff vectors because it's not the best. I mean, we don't have the best solution. We have, well, sort of a better alternatives. So epsilon core is basically the, the idea of providing this better alternatives. Um, I'm not going to, well, I mean, one question is like, obviously, is there any epsilon core and what would be the minimum epsilon? Well, in this case, all you have to do, instead of making a guess and verify, well, you would just need to rewrite everything here, right? So what would be my system of inequalities? Well, it would be the following. So remember, if we consider the singletons, uh, a should be greater than or equal to V of A minus epsilon, so it's minus epsilon. Uh, B is greater than minus epsilon, C is greater than minus epsilon. But don't forget, feasibility already requires me that A, B, and C, these are all greater than zero, okay? So this minus epsilon sign, together with this, is in fact means these guys are going to be zero, all right? Because we are not allowed to have them minus. Okay, what else? The doubletons, A, B. So A plus B must be greater than or equal to one minus epsilon, B plus C greater than or equal to one minus epsilon, and finally, A plus C greater than or equal to one minus epsilon, and then A plus B plus C, uh, must be greater than or equal to one minus epsilon. And then don't forget the feasibility, a plus b plus c has to be equal to one. So these two, right, I mean, actually means, I mean, this inequality must be satisfied for the feasibility. So therefore I can ignore this. It's redundant inequality. So just say it's equal to one. So the number of, once I ignore the redundant inequalities, that means, I need to find the value of ABC, which satisfies those seven inequalities. Okay, that's it. So for example, if epsilon is zero, I'll, I'm sorry, if epsilon is one, uh, can you suggest me a payoff vector ABC that is going to be one core? Okay, 
Any suggestion? Epsilon is one. Zero, zero, one. Um, for example, zero, zero, 001 is in epsilon core when epsilon is one. Well, why is that? Well, because a plus b is zero, greater than or equal to zero. b plus c is one, greater than uh, zero. a plus c one, greater than zero. And a plus b plus c is equal to one. Yep. What else? Uh, one third, one third, one third. That's also in epsilon core. So in fact, there's a lot of epsilon core uh, payoff vectors. Well, but epsilon equals one is a huge sort of uh, error, right? I mean, it's like, I mean, Remember, the, the maximum worth is 1. So it, it means these guys have huge incentive to deviate, in fact. So this one core is like, I mean, useless, pointless. So we need to find a smaller epsilon. So therefore, um, that's, that's what you're supposed to find. Well, I'm, I'm going to leave this as an exercise because I, there's a bunch of other things I would like to solve. But again, all you have to do is just solve this system of linear inequalities and again this is this is a simple arithmetic um, the problem is the problem with cooperative game theory is when the number of players increase right imagine instead of having three players we have like five or ten players uh, I mean when it when it's a political party maybe it's a horrible political situation but you know some other problem where ten players is just a reasonable number well then the number of inequalities is going to be extremely large uh, because there is going to be a lot of more, um, you know, uh, coalitions or subsets, non-empty subsets. So the solving a system of non-linear uh, equations, uh, you know, by hand is not going to be so easy. Like you, you have to use some sort of a computer program or anything.